Maybe I'm not late. Maybe you're just early. Did you ever look at that? Look at that. I got hair hanging out. Oh my god. Look at this. Yeah, I'm late. <laughs> I'm late. I got two tears in the bucket. Fuck it. I'm late. <laughs> oh my god, I need a haircut. I need a haircut. I need all my haircut. <laughs> I got wings. I'm Daniel Jones. I'm the peacock. Oh my god, wait a minute. So is this side. Gotta get tucked in that side of the hat. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. Just hold that thought. Of me. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to, uh, I had to situate myself. Oh, we got the giant Sunday. We got a couple of things to talk about this wonderful day. We already got people in the house. Tim is two minutes late. Time for some push ups. No, I'm going to run some laps. Hey, oh, we got the draft party coming up. I'm super excited about the draft party. I'm excited. Got my tickets, got my hotel. I'm excited. I want to see what this, this giant organization is going to do. Oh, I just got to (laughs) see. I just got to see it because you know what, man? I'm going to cry. I think I'm going to cry. I might cry. I don't know. Isaiah Simmons. I wanted to talk about Isaiah Simmons right off the bat because I didn't do a video. I posted some shit on Twitter about it, but of course I got blasted on it. You know when you post something on Twitter, and usually what I like to do is I like to post things on Twitter and then let the neophytes just go crazy. That's usually what I like to do. it, And then not respond to anything. Because it makes it even better. <laughs> so I posted on Twitter that 31 other teams had passed multiple times on Isaiah Simmons, that he had been an unrestricted free agent now for a couple of weeks, and he had no takers. At one point in time, people like Pro Football Focus and a couple of these uh, websites that predict cap space had his value, projected value at $18 million. $18 million. Million dollars. That's what they had his projected value as. He's been in the league for five years. Doesn't have a position. <laughs> They'll talk about it. Look at his look at his ability to cover. That's the first thing everyone points out. Look at his ability to cover. Okay. We're gonna do let's let's do that. But let's also look at his ability to give up first downs. Let's also look at his yak on his ability to cover. Let's just not look at his per, his percentage. His he, he they're they're only competing blank about percentage again, but we can look at the totality of everything, and the fact that there was a guy we've talked about it before and a couple years back that was seventh in the league in deep ball passing. He had thirteen attempts, and the next guy had forty six. So his also his percentage of attempts and coverage were extremely low compared to other people playing at his position and playing at his percentage of plays on the field. Good athlete can do some stuff, Isaiah Simmons, but nobody else wanted him. And we are as a fan base because of the way the dearth of talent on our roster, we automatically look at this and go, Oh my God. It's the greatest signing ever. Holy shit. We just got Isaiah Simmons back. Yes. He didn't even start. He is now going to be, um, he is now going to be asked to probably start, asked to do more than he has ever done since going back to Arizona. But this is a guy that is, is, is just, it's a retread signing. You, we, we got excited about his talent last year because we felt that it was going to be something. We felt that it was going to make a difference in Wink's defense. We felt that. And this is a guy that played in 17 games. He is three seasons, he'll be three seasons removed from his big season of 105 tackles, where a lot of that time in Arizona in 2001, he, pl- he played a quasi linebacker. Um, safety position. He's already came out and said that he doesn't want to play safety. <laughs> he said that. He said that before. You know, he's not. He's. I'm not a safety. Okay, you're 25 years old. You are now going into your fifth year in the league. You are what you are. You played in 67 games. You started 47 of them. You only have eight and a half sacks and 300 tackles. You are what you are. 
And this is what you are. You are a bit player. You are an athletic player. You are a guy that does not have a position. You are a tweener. We've used that phrase a million times before. You are a tweener. That means you're in between different positions. People will talk about his 439 speed. Okay. He, he was such a good player for the Giants last year. He only played in 33% of the defensive snaps. He's gone. He hit, in Arizona, he started at 34, 92, 81, 33. Now with the Giants. Total of 377 plays. He played in only 49, but which I found this shocking because I did not know this. He only played in 49% of the Giants' special team snaps, which was only 224 plays. But we got him. We went and got we went and tricked. We bamboozled. Haven't been able to use that word in a long time. We bamboozled the entire league and went and got a guy who was drafted 11th overall who's been in the league for four years that nobody wanted. But don't worry, Shane Bone and his versatility, who has had some of the worst defensive secondaries in years when he was out, when he was without Jim Schwartz, now has a backfield in the second, excuse me, in the secondary with the safety position as Simmons, Belton, and Pinnock. And then we still don't have a CB2. And we're going to hope Banks doesn't regress. You're going to hope Flott and you're going to hope Darnie Holmes step up. Is Aaron Robinson still on this team? Why not give him a chance? Why don't we just give him a chance? <laughs> I'm actually thinking about coming out of retirement. I'm looking good. I'm looking fit now. I'm back. I, I drop it at about I drop it at like nine, ten LBs. I'm at my playing weight. I can't run, can't cover, can't tackle. Probably be i uh, probably be on the oxygen tank after every other snap. But it's just it's just as good as bringing back Isaiah Simmons. <laughs> We've talked about this before, kiddies. We've talked about it a million times. It's the cap space. The Giants are making these types of moves because of the Brian Burns. It's true. You, the carbon co We're making these moves because of the carbon copy of Tave, a cave on Thibodeau. Without the rule of 51 right now, as it stands, people will say, well, we have, Tim, we have like $8 million in cup space with the rule of 51. Without the rookie draft class, without Shane's $10 million in operational cap space. We won't, we won't even think about the practice squad. No, we're not going to think about that stuff. But even if you do, and even with the restructure of Lawrence and not counting the rookie draft pool, not counting operational cap space, and not counting uh, the practice squad, we're about negative. We are, without the rule 51, we will be negative $9 million. So excuse me if I'm not going to sit there and cream myself. That's what she said. Over the signing of a player that has been on free agent market forever that no other team wanted. That's the giant way. Well, it's been the giant way the last 10 years, but don't worry. We'll sit there and read social media and we'll read other content creators and other giant beat writers. And this will be the greatest fucking site since the history of sliced bread. What do we got in the chat going on this morning? We got James Williams coming in early on. What's up, family? Walk it, hit the chat, hit the like. Uh, James says, I think our fan base has been listening to Dennis Hopper and speed. Do not attempt to grow a brain. <laughs> Mike Lee says, smash that like button. Or like the scarecrow wishing they had a brain. If I only had a brain. <laughs> I, I did if I only had a sack. Until if I only had a brain. I mean, come on. What do we have if we only had a sack? If I only had a sack? That's when Kayvon Thibodeau went through his dearth of six weeks only had in, having one sack. Because that's I still have that. I, I may have to do a part two of if I only had a sack. Oh, that's Kayvon. If I, wait, I don't I didn't have if I only have a sack. Where did I go? Where where did if I only had a sack go? Uh, I guess I lost it. That's such a great sound effect. How did I lose that one? Ah, uh, it takes one week. Are you look to me? Uh, I don't think so. He meant wait. It's got to. It's got to be next to James's sound effect. 
We'll have to play James's favorite sound effect because I don't know if James is working today, but. Hey, kids, look over there. Who is it? It's Kayvon, the friendly pass rusher. Oh, no. Now he's gone. That, of course, is, that of course was Kayvon, the friendly. Oh, here we go. Found it. We're going to, just for you, Mike Lee, we're going to have to do another one for Giant fans. <laughs> I gotta come up with something. The old life thinks I'm nothing if I only had a sack. Good morning, Joe Rev. What says good morning, T Dog? And to He Man, DJ He Man Haters Club. <laughs> That's what you are. There's the hair club for men. I don't need that. But we also have the DJ He Man Haters Club. Mike Lee says at least it's a one year deal. <laughs> It's another one-year prove-it deal on a guy that got a one-year prove-it deal off his old contract, and he didn't prove anything, so we didn't pick up the, no one picked up the fifth-year option. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, James. What's up, Big Blue family? I was watching the 2022 matchup against the Redskins, looking at Jones, thinking everything we talked about on here. There's still people on Twitter, and there's still people in the – giant community they're like we can't we, we can't go out and get a quarterback that's just crazy and i love the logic and the excuse well hey we don't know what we have Neil jones and then the other excuse is which is my favorite of all time well why would you want to put a rookie quarterback and put him behind this offensive line i thought you just improved the offensive line thought you i thought getting out getting runyon getting cam fleming 2.0 Evan Neal's going to progress. I, mean, I thought the line got improved. I, I thought we're done. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, Matthew said, first read, checks down, got time to. I'm not seeing him in the rush. That He's not in a rush. He doesn't look downfield. How many times, Matthew, we talked about the fact that he had shots downfield. He had pre-designed shots downfield, which we showed the video of, and he checked down, didn't even look down the field, and he had a man wide open. Or he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. If you have a speed guy like a Hyatt, if you have a speed guy like a Darius Slayton, if you have an alleged speed guy like Alondo Robinson, probably not going to find him halfway down the field because he's only four foot eight. But if you have that guy and you see on the left side of the field, because you're you're being the bionic man, and you're scanning the field, you see on the left side of the left field, single coverage, no over-the-top safety help. The smart quarterback, the bright quarterback, the good quarterback throws to that spot. No, we checked down Eric Gray. <laughs> uh, people, people who want a wide receiver who are throw who is throwing to put the ball on lock and Casper the Ghost because Jones can't hit the broad side of a barn on Sundays. Can't, I don't think you can do it on Tuesdays either. And I love it because some people are like, I love this logic. Because I saw this on Twitter and I don't remember who it was. They were like, well, using that excuse of who's going to throw the balls, like using the offensive line excuse for Daniel Jones. Look at me. My IQ is eight. Uh, Jones can't even see the barn. I know because he's got a lazy eye. Uh, Matthew says, Zach, this Redskin game, he missed a man in motion and threw. I do remember that play, Matthew. I do remember that play. Uh, what do we got here? It was 2022. I do remember the play. Uh, bu 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 Tim in two minutes time for push-ups. Uh, he was terrible when in the T dog says Jeff Davies says you are the host. You are the host. The host is not allowed to be late. I wasn't late. I didn't get my computer on on time. I wasn't late. You want to know why? Because the clock was early. Uh, what's up, Moet? What's going on? Tim doing push-ups on the live stream. If the Giants do something stupid on draft day, and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, if they do something stupid on draft day, I will drop. You know what? I don't think the I don't think the Giants are smart enough to take quarterback. I'm going to rephrase this. I don't think the Giants are smart enough to take a quarterback. I don't. Even if the likes of Daniels, Penix, McCarthy or maybe May substituting Daniels or whoever. If there's three quality quarterbacks there. I don't think the Giants are smart enough to take one. If they take one, 
I will drop in the middle of the giant locker room and do 100 push-ups. Barbara says, it's only a small portion of the fan base, though. Well, no, it's a pretty big portion. I have I have a question. Okay, dude, do you think is the perception of the organization as we sit today, uh, what if we need to look for a new head coach GM? Does anyone truly respect Mara anymore? I think the respect for Mara has been gone for a while. I think the respect for Mara has been gone since Wellington died. So th- I should rephrase that for the Mara name, the cachet of the Mara name. I think, I think that's been gone since Well Wellington. I don't think John is. I don't think John has done anything outside. The smartest thing John did was hire Ernie Acorsi and allow him to draft Eli Manning. That was the smartest thing he ever did. But it's gone downhill since 2011, and now we're going into 2024. Amigado says, "I'm thinking Joe Shane is going to poop in his pants for a third year in a row. Is Joe Shane going to crap the bed? Is he going to piss the sheets? Are we going to have to get rubber sheets for Joe? We might." His drafts have not been spectacular. His free agency outside of Bobby Okereke has been bad to awful. His cap management. Uh, Listen, I give Shane, he came in to cap purgatory. He did. But I assume by year three of his regime that we were going to be out of cap purgatory. But he made, he to me, he made fan moves. And what I mean by that is I think he made moves that you would make on Madden. He gave Lawrence and Thomas back-to-back contracts. He gave Daniel Jones big money for an average year. And he tagged Saquon Barkley and then we'll let him walk for nothing. Those were moves I would think a fan would make, not a, not a three-year now season general manager. Just honest. Think about that. Think about, you know, think about what he has done. Paris Campbell, who we gave four and a half million to, and we all thought it was a great deal. I thought it was a great deal, four and a half million. I thought Paris Campbell was going to do a lot more, but of course he went to a, he went to a team where quarterbacks go to die. I mean, excuse me, wide receivers go to die. And then after Paris Campbell leaves, he says, I took the giant money because they were the only one to offer me money. (laughs) Think about that. He came to New York because they were the only one that offered him a contract. Sometimes we outsmart ourselves. It's like Shane sometimes thinks he is the smartest guy in the room. He really does. And we've said this a million times before. Those that think they are the smartest guys in the room usually are the dumbest. And I'm not saying Shane's dumb. I'm just saying if you look at his track record right now and the players that he's brought in, his claim to fame is Banks, Okereke, and re-signing Dave Gellman guys. Those are his claims to fame. Oh, we got Runyon. Even though Green Bay said if he wanted anywhere near $10 million, they would never resign him, that he was a three-year starter and he was the weakest link on the line, and he has propensity for pre-snap penalties. Don't pull him as a guard because he trips up. He'll trip over his own feet, and he can't run block, but he's good at pass blocking. No, we gave him $36 million. Mike Lee says, this means the Giants will pay at least $25 million. Zach Zach says, our fan base is living up to being the stupidest. We are. We are number one. We are number one. Uh, giant upper office, says Rick. Giant upper office and up management also is living up to the stupidity for the most years now. It really has. <laughs> LeVar says, let's give up something to talk about. Shane Bowen doesn't use versatile players. Well, I don't. I don't trust Shane either. You waited a week. You could have got a quality defensive coordinator who was just in the Super Bowl. And has a track history of being on his own and being successful. Not having Mike Vrabel to babysit. Not having Jim Schwartz to babysit. And Jim Schwartz basically came out and said, my job those two years in Tennessee was to mentor the coaching staff. And to be a second set of eyes. Go read the article. It's in the Tennessean. And to basically be a second set of eyes and say, this is what I would do. And to Zach's point, he doesn't use players that are versatile. 
Good point, Zach. Good point. Barbara says, I love this comment. Barbara says, Simmons was invisible last year. Who? <laughs> because he barely ever, he never got on the field, but I keep hearing about this great player, and I looked at it, and I, I almost went crazy, Barbara, because I looked at it, and I said, he only played like 30-something percent of the snaps, and only 44% of the special team snaps. So what the hell was he doing? I didn't even know it was that light. A guy with his versatility should have been playing in at least 90% of the snaps in reference to special teams, especially if you're only playing 38% of the snaps during the regular defense and you have no defensive packages. But I got to hear about his coverage skills when he had the least amount of covers in reference to being ranked. And we've said this before, the, it's just like a batting average. I always told the story. Great defensive catcher. That was a great defensive catcher. Couldn't hit a lick. Couldn't hit anything. Curveball, fastball, slider, wiffle ball. Couldn't hit it. Went three for three my first game. I'm batting a thousand. Manager things. We're going to keep playing them. Yeah. I go 0 for three the next game. I'm still batting 500. Then I forgot how many, I think I had two at-bats in the game next. So now I'm, I'm still, after three games, I'm still batting 250. And I have two extra base hits. But as more and more went on, that I, that average dropped well below the Mendoza line. <laughs> so it didn't mean I was good. It, mean I, it means I was good for a short period of time. Jose G says, why haven't the Giants looked at the safety from the Colts, 25 years old, good safety. We don't have any money. <laughs> We're negative eight million dollars, almost nine million dollars without the rule of 51, not including 10 million dollars in operational cap space, not including the rookie draft pool. We're negative nine million dollars. <laughs> I don't get this. For the love of blank, someone please explain this to me. The last four seasons now, this will be season four. I have been predicting the cap. I have not been wrong once. I said last year a couple of times we are going to run, and I kept saying, I don't get it. My math says we are going to run out of money a week or two after midseason. And we ended up trading. King of the almost sack. Because we had no money to sign a quarterback. We had no cap space. When we could only field 51 men two years ago or three years ago, kept telling people, we don't have enough money to field the full roster. I keep looking at my numbers. There's going to have to be major restructuring going on, and it's going to have to be right off the bat. You're going to figure it's going to have to be Thomas. Thomas is going to have to be restructured. You're going to have to hope that Walder retires to get that six and a half, like 6.9 million. And the scary shit of all is there's that fucking Daniel Jones anchor. And we already own 22 in dead cap next year. So what, you're going to restructure and put 30 million or so on the cap for next year for a quarterback that'll be in year seven that you're not even sure about? In free agency, and Trey Jones got one decent player on Bobby Okereke. Matthew says, Wellington set up Johnny Boy back in the early 90s. The success wasn't because of merit. It was because of his roster his father's put together, which was torn apart in 2013. Uh, I agree with that, and I disagree with that. George Young left the shambles at the end, and we had a couple other general managers. So I agree with that. I agree with that, and I disagree with that. But I understand what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Cutthroat says, with the six overall pick, the New York Giants select Cutthroat the water boy. <laughs> Bobby Boucher would be one of the best defenders we have. Uh, what does Brandon Brown do? Give bad, uh, give bad analyst takes. What does Brandon Brown do? Just give bad an analytics takes. I don't know what Brandon Brown does. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know what our, I mean, I don't know what our cap situation, I don't understand our capology. I really don't. I don't get it. And I always say, I'm not here on this planet to get it. But when you, as an adult, when you look at something, you see your child doing something wrong. You talk to your child. You say, listen, 
child. Don't do that because in the end, it's just going to make things worse. And I know everyone's in love with the Brian Burns train, whatever. And I'll say it again. Compensation-wise, good deal. But then you turned around and gave him $144 million. So that limited cap space you had, you chopped. And then I had to hear about how we have all this cap space in 2025. We have $100 million in cap space in 2025. I had to hear that in 2024, and I kept telling people, no, 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 no. We got about 48 in cap space right now in 2025 with 31 people on the active roster, 31 active contracts. It's tough to be a Giants fan. It really is. Matthew says, John's legacy is now 2013, keeping Eli too long, getting a lackluster replacement with two winning seasons in 12 years, something like that. Yeah, exactly what it's like. We got Jose G says, I think Joe is thinking he can get the quarterback when we don't need a basically a second, a secondly, need a good secondly. But what happens if we don't get, we're not getting, we need a quarterback in the first round. Joe, Penix is not getting past the Raiders. There's certain people that love Bo Nix. I don't see it, but I don't think he's getting past the Broncos. So you're going to grab a Spencer Rattler? You're going to grab a Hartman? You're going to grab a Leary? I don't see it. I have a feeling that McCarthy, if he doesn't go six, he's going to go so he'll go 11 to Minnesota. And I think Penix, like I said, is going to go to the Raiders. And I think Nix is going to the Broncos. So who's left for the Giants? Spencer Rattler. Oh, great. Guy that flamed out in Oklahoma. It's kind of an asshole in that Netflix series. And had to go to South Carolina. And showed that he cracks under pressure. Yeah, okay. That sounds good to me. Uh, James says he can't run. He can't or cover. He can't run, tackle, or cover. You're perfect. Sign right here. You're a Giant. <laughs> James, is that a picture from when we were? Oh, yeah, that is, because there's my shoulder. Estimated cap space, according to Sports Track right now, without the rule of 51, I said 9 million. They're probably wrong. I'm probably like, they're pro I'm right there wrong. Zach, I'm right there wrong. Get over it. Danny says, oh, I love it. I love it, too. DJ said, if I only had an O-line. Good morning, Raymond. Good morning. If you had a choice, May or McCarthy. I'm taking May. Oh, was I supposed to pause and pontificate and have a little say sewer? Okay, let's 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 read Raymond's comments again, and we're gonna do it the right way. Good morning. If you had a chance, May or McCarthy? Hmm. I'm going May. <laughs> May, and I know the whole Duke thing in North Carolina and all that crap. May is not Daniel Jones. May actually played against competition in North Carolina. He didn't have the Duke competition. He actually played against guys. He's got a big body. He's got the arm. He's got the, the, the physical intangibles. But the only thing that scares me, and this isn't coming from me, this is also coming, it is coming from me, because I've seen it as well, but other scouts have said it before. He has a difficult time processing plays, and he's a little bit slow in his progressions. Never heard of that before. The Giants have 56% of them invested in offense, a total of one point one four one hundred forty seven million dollars in offense. Tim is now Tim and it's not Twitter. It's X or triple X. Bruce says serious question. Does Joshi understand he has to retain and rebuild around good players and not just mediocre ones? No, <laughs> no, he I don't know. I hope to God I am invited to the town hall. I would probably say there's a 50-50 shot that I'm not. <laughs> because I got a question for Joe. And I love people that ask these questions like, you know, they ask him, they ask Joe these questions like on the phone or in comment sections or places like that. And they're like, like oh, look at me how cool I'm asking this question. <laughs> no. I do it in the town hall. I stand up in front of in front in, in front of 9,000 season ticket holders in front of a microphone naked to the world cuz I'm standing right there and I will ask the question. 
And I let them know immediately who I am. I loved it because I came back to the seat and James called me a dumbass. My theory was there's only 9,000 of them and one of me. They need about another 1,000 people. Uh, Jack said, what I can't stand is fans who complain about the O-line but want to draft a running back over a card in the second round. Jack. Jack just nailed it, man. Jack literally just nailed it with this comment right there. Yeah, I don't get that either. We need an O-line, man, but we've got to take a running back. <laughs> Don't worry, we got the we got pinball or whoever we got it out of Columbia who played South Carolina and had like 36 yards. Don't worry, we signed him too. Uh, SB says facts. Davy said, So who is better, Craig Morton or Daniel Jones? Neither. <laughs> Neither. Uh, Matthew says Craig Carton is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. Oh, gee, says, What's up, Tim? They will do something stupid on draft day. Is that a prediction? Because I think you're not wrong. Uh, OG says, I have been saying it mostly John Mayer now for four years. You truly you truly have. Uh, let's see. Barbara says, why didn't we keep Julian Love? I thought he was pretty good. Julian, I don't understand the Julian Love thing. I don't understand the love child. My wife was in love with Julian Love and not in that way. But she loved him because of the fact that we were at a preseason game. We were standing on the sideline and another giant got hurt. I don't remember who it was. And he was sitting on the corner of the bench with the entire training staff. And Julian Love was the only player to go over and check to make sure that he was all right. So immediately my wife was like, well, he's a nice guy. I like him. We can be fans of another 20. I love it. We can be fans of number 20. <laughs> we, like, we like him. And he's a guy that was a homegrown talent drafted by the Giants. And he was a guy that kind of showed a progression for his entire career. Now, some people will say, well, he was only a 5'11", 200-pound safety. He was a guy that played in something like, I don't know, I, I, don't, I think he missed one game as a Giant, and that was in his rookie season. And he had his big starters. He had 16 starts finally in 2022. And when he had those 16 starts, he had 120. People forget he had 124 tackles, 79 solo, which means he only had 45 assists. This is a guy that played well. He went from 37, 64 to 66 tackles to 124. And, the, and 24 years old, goes to Seattle, 123 tackles, 85 solo. And four interceptions. And I don't understand why. It's not like he got a shit ton of money to go to Seattle. No, we let him walk because of the fact that we had, he signed a two-year $12 million deal. We let him walk because of the, 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 the plethora of safeties, even though we just let Xavier McKinney go. <laughs> So the Giants couldn't come up. The Giants couldn't not sign Paris Campbell and another player. And for $6 million a year, bring back Julian Love, who was a homegrown talent, who broke, who had a breakout season the year before and has progressed and continued to progress in Seattle. Julian Love is the poster child of what's wrong with the giant front office. You have a homegrown talent. You have a homegrown player. You have a guy that has been nothing but a, a pillar on this team in reference to his personality and his work ethic and everything else. Doesn't miss games. Missed one game in four years. Went from 37, 64 to 66 tackles and jumped up to 124 as you gave him more snaps. And the Giants, he I love this. And this is the best part. The, his snap count went from, for the Giants, 39%, 66, 52. And then he finally jumps up to 95. 
And then you're going to say to me, well, Tim, he probably had like 95, 100 percent of the snaps over in Seattle. No, 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 no. He was only involved in 79 percent of the defensive snaps for Seattle and had more interceptions and more tackles and more solo tackles. He is the poster child of what is wrong with the giant organization in reference to keeping talent. You couldn't find $12 million, Joe, over two years to sign Julian Love. But you're in love with Dane Belton. Dane Belton should have been cut. You want me to be honest? Dane Belton should have been cut. His ass should be on the street. People are talking, well, the Matthew Stafford, look at those interceptions. And look at he was gifted two interceptions and a fumble, and then proceeded to give up four consecutive touchdown plays to be in the trailer on four consecutive touchdown plays. That's what got him benched two years ago in the Texans game. And he makes stupid plays. So we rather get rid of the intelligent player in Julian Love, who has progressed through the system and is now coming into his own, so we can have Dane Button. I was happy to get rid of the gentleman, but not so much. I also like the Yankees. Well, the Yankees are good. Uh, they told Russell Wilson he's not starting if he comes to New York. What the fuck? He told, they told, they literally told Russell Wilson. They literally told Russell Wilson it's Daniel Jones's job. Russell Wilson comes in for a meeting with the Giants. He is the first team. He the Giants are the first team he meets. The first team. And they have the preliminary field out meeting. And he goes there, and our staff says, well, Daniel Jones is a starter. <laughs> You're not really going to be able to compete for the job. It's Daniel Jones' job. What, what are you, Russell Wilson? Wait, 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 you want the two Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl? Even had a bad season, which would have been a – you had a bad season last year, allegedly, in Denver, even though you had a five-game winning streak, and you had better statistics than the quarterback that who had a good season two years prior? And you have a, pred a pedigree and you have a resume? <laughs> no. We're going with the six-year bum. <sighs> okay. Perhaps like DJ, Kent have competent coaches around Dable. Wink was by accident. I agree. Uh, let's see here. Th three years, and we are still in a major rebuild with no offense, and we have six picks and need a quarterback. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about that either. I, I think it's... Uh, uh, let's see. Is it uh, is it Chicago who has eleven picks? And of course, they have two first rounders. But do they have eleven picks, or is it Denver that has eleven picks? There's teams out there that are in the middle of rebuild have like eleven picks. We have six, and we swapped our second round pick. <laughs> we don't have. We don't own our own second round pick. We gave that. We sw we gave that to Brian Burns. So we have Seattle's pick, A and. We didn't swap. I should say we gave it. We swapped fifth rounders. That's right. We swapped fifth rounders. <laughs> For a guy who was a carbon copy of Cave on Divido and older than Cave on Divido. <laughs> but don't worry. He poses like Spider Man. So it's cool. That's like. Drew Locke dances to her. He dances to hip hop on the sidelines. Hey, hold. so that's cool. I just want someone to throw some touchdowns. Giants should bring Billy Bean in as a capologist. They should. You don't need to worry about talent. Davey says, what the Giants need to do is set up a GoFundMe page. <laughs> you might need to. I'm going to set up a GoFundMe page so I can pay for these tickets. Uh, we need Locke to beat out Jones at camp. Can't afford to let DJ start, let alone get injured. No, we can't let him afford to get injured because then we're just screwed. Th that wonderful idea of the shame to, to with the injury thing. If he gets hurt, oh my God, we're fucked. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have a quarterback in 2025. We are so screwed if he gets hurt. It's not even going to be funny. Uh, we are wrecking the cap only to keep Daniel Jones on the team. We, we, we are a charity at this point in time. I couldn't read that because I kept thinking, coming in like a wrecking ball. Matthew says they will make Jones sit at some point next year. They will all, they might also force him to play injured too. <laughs> Davey says maybe the Giants need to post a job opportunity and LinkedIn capologist. I would apply. 
I think I have all the qualifications in the world to be the Giants capologist. I own a calculator. There you go. Peace, says Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Jose G says, damn, didn't we uh, didn't know we were negative. I thought we were going in the positive. You're right. Thomas is going to have to restructure. Thomas is going to have to restructure. And even with the Thomas restructure, you are going to have to hope for the wall of retirement. And then you're still short. And there's only one boat anchor left on this ship. I almost said shit, but on the ship that you can restructure. And that's the Jones contract. And I see it coming. I see the, we are in the dark tunnel. And there is that light, that little tiny light that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And yes, folks, it is a train. It's the Daniel Jones Express. This draft should determine if Shane and Dable will be here next year. I agree 100%. Giants 34 says, Brandon Brown was hired to take the heat off the team after the Brian Flores lawsuit. He was hired to show the Giants aren't racist. Yeah, could be. <laughs> Wide out or WB <laughs> or QB? I'm taking a quarterback. The, your whole organization, your whole team, your whole philosophy revolves around the quarterback. Out of the 53 men on the roster, if you rank them from position one to 53, with one being the most important, every team, all 32 teams have written in QB. We've said this before. The quarterback is probably the most important position of all sports. Basketball, baseball, soccer, cricket, high line, beer pong is probably the most important position in all sports. And the Giants have been treating that position like it's number 23. Which quarterback has the best processor? Can't handle another DJ. <sighs> Best at processing plays in college. And that's what it is. It's college. So you're going to have to go through the college progression. You're, you're going to have to go. I'm actually probably going to, it's going to be surprised. I'm actually probably going to go Penix. Then I'm going to go Williams. Then I will probably go May. Then I will go Daniels. Then I will go McCarthy. Um, at the top five, that's, that's, that's what I would do. Jose says, make me the GM can't be any worse than the last 10 years. You're right. James Williams. So I'm going to get to you, James. I feel like Joe is just a mouthpiece for Mara. The Giants says James are telling Wilson that he will be the backup for to an injured Daniel Jones. It might be the most blatant show of disrespect to a proven black quarterback I've seen in a while. You know, it's funny. I know we always talk about the Giants could be inherently racist in regards to the fact that the way they uh, run their quarterback room, and I don't know if it's true or not. But I will tell you this: I don't, I, I don't think it would matter if it was guy was if he was black or white. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. I, I think it wouldn't matter. I think, I think they could have had a late model Joe Montana, who went to Kansas City, and if he was had the same stats that he had back then. And he came to the Giants as a free agent and said, hey, listen, I, I want to be the, you know, I'll come here, but I got to be the guy. I still think they would have went, nope, Daniel Jones is the guy. Because there's this blind stupidity that I don't get. James, are you home? Here, I'll put the chat in the link. Link in the chat. There you go, James. If you're home, come on. <laughs> if you're home, James, come on. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Patrick Graham ruined Julian Love. I don't think he ruined him. I just think he was a player and he just didn't come into his own yet. We need a box safety. Do you think their plans that for Simmons? I think they're going to have to make him a linebacker. I really think they're going to have to make him a linebacker. But I think I think the smart thing would to have him majority of the time be the linebacker. You want him to be like a Peppers was. You want him to be like a Logan Ryan was where they paid 100% of the snaps and they played like 68% of the snaps in the box. That's not going to happen. That's not, that's not going to happen. 
Uh, let's see. They could have kept Love and McKinney instead of re-signing Burns and Runyon. They could. Love and McKinney didn't play key positions. Edge is extremely important. We desperately need guard help. Okay, well, here's the, here, Mr. Shelton, here's the problem with your edge philosophy. Yes, the edge is an important position. Yes, the pass rush is an important position. But one of the things you need to remember is that's key for a defensive end position is you have to understand the nuances of playing the run. You have to understand how and have the ability to maintain your assignment to hold your edge. You have to have that ability. You have to have the ability to, with the understanding that you need to push to play back into the center of the field, which your strength is for the likes of Dexter Lawrence, for Dexter Lawrence to work. Because most teams are going to avoid, well, most teams didn't last year, but most teams are going to avoid going into the center of the field and they are going to attack the weakest points of the line, which are going to be your over-pursuing defensive ends who both have a tendency to disappear for large periods of times, not plays, but games. We went through the stats. You can generate all the pass rush you want, but if a smart team, a smart coordinator, a smart, quarter, a smart quarterback understands the fact that you are going to have two ends who are more likely going to over-pursue the quarterback, which both have shown the propensity to do, all you're going to do is run a draw. All you're going to do is throw a quick out. All you're going to do is understand that more than likely... Kayvon Thibodeau, who had this problem multitudes of times of getting pushed to the sideline by the guard, you step up into the pocket because you want to know why? It's more than likely going to be clear because all you have is Dexter Lawrence and you have two ends who have already gone past you. For those that do not know, we have two emergency exits in the front, two in the rear, and two of the sides of the aircraft. <laughs> we will be sure. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Shelton. I keep hearing that, and I'm like, okay, football philosophy dictates a pass rush can disrupt and change the nuances of a game. Who's sending me private messages? Oh, hi, Davey. Um, yes, they can. Davey, I'm on a rant right now, man. I can't have you on. I'm on a rant right now. That you can't have this, this understanding of, yes, this will change the nuances of the game. Yes, it will. But the problem is this. This is only going to be maybe 15%, 20%, because you have an offense defensive coordinator who does not blitz except for four guys. He likes to generate his rush over his entire career with four guys. And then he has a tendency of dropping those two guys into coverage. <laughs> so at this point in time, you have a carbon copy of two players one you're paying $25 million, one that's going to be in his third year, which is, means he's going to be rocketing towards that fifth-year option against the salary cap who only has $48 million in 2025, and you still only have Bobby Okereke sitting in linebacker. And you do not have a true defensive end, and you don't have any true outside linebackers who have the understanding that I am going to have to help Burns and Thibodeau maintain their assignments in regards to the run. So you better hope to God that Kayvon and Burns both get about 15 and a half sacks. Because if not, teams are going to run rough shot over the Giants. I didn't invent football. I didn't invent the rules. All I do is just take a look at th what things do. Talked about it four years ago against that Cleveland preseason game. And I said it during the preseason game four years ago. They sh the, 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 the Browns, just and this is what Baker Mayfield, just showed the entire league how to beat the Giants the first preseason game. Off tackle left, off tackle right, run up the middle, over the top, and that's what teams did all that year. Because you can see it. <sighs> Talk me down, brother man. Talk me down. <laughs> you drinking this? Hello. You drinking this? I have, a, a Giants and a Mets fan? Life is hard. <laughs> life is hard. Oh, and a Knicks fan with Randall being out. Life is hard. Randall's gone. Of course, Randall's gone for the season. He evidently re-injured his shoulder doing during some type of contact uh, during yes. practice, and uh, he he is, he is out for the season. Josh Hart got uh, got uh, kicked out of the game yesterday against the Bulls, which the Knicks then proceeded to lose. But they still maintain their spot in the playoffs because uh, Miami lost. 
So our magic number to clinch six and stay out of the play in is uh, three. Yeah, we um listen, I hate to say it. My prediction is I said this like two months ago to my boys at work. I said, we're going to end up playing Orlando in the first round. and We're going to lose in, se in seven games. You know, it's funny. I actually think we can beat Orlando. I think we can, but I think their youth, and even though we have more experience and the better coach, I just think they're going to play with blind, youthful abandonment. And they're just, you know, they, they're, we're just not healthy. You know, we missing Randall as annoying as he is at times. He's a big piece to this team, especially this year, the way everything was fitting. It's like, you know, it's weird, man. It's a weird sports time in New York. Everyone's everyone's happy. James is here. <laughs> what up, chat? Salute, salute. Oh, love early drinks. Uh, any? Uh, can I just ask one question, James? Is there any fireball around there? <laughs> the bucket of fireball for five ninety nine. <laughs> send send in your forty nine ninety nine dollar super chat, and I will do a two cent shot of fireball for you. Oh my God! MK Five says we have two extra tickets to the draft party. We have one extra ticket, and I think we're giving it away. Um, James, I need your help. Okay. I need your help. I needed your help yesterday. <laughs> I got it. Oh, I got, I know. I got into some. I got into it with someone in the supermarket. Yesterday. Oh, you did. Damn it! I wasn't there. I love stuff like this. Man. Oh, you, you Damn would have loved it. You would have loved it because Tiffany yelled at me. Because there is this, I'm we're we're on this diet because of Tiffany's you know issues and health and everything, and my health and everything. So I mean, it's um, and this guy was drinking. He was opening bottles in the organic food aisle and drinking out of it. <laughs> and then he was, putting, he was then putting the bottles back, back. Back. Oh my god. Well, I'm standing right there. Oh my god. Now my problem is I'm about 15 pounds lighter. I'm back in the gym, so now my testosterone's at an all-time high. So I see this and I say, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and he, doesn't, he doesn't say anything and he starts walking down the aisle. And I'm not talking walking down the aisle, I mean walking down where the cash registers are. So I step back out and I literally start yelling at him from across as you should. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, not, and I'm not talking yelling niceties. <laughs> So he keeps walking. And then I go to customer service and I tell customer service what's happening, what he's wearing, what he's looking like, what his girlfriend is. And the customer service is right there as a self checkout. And there he he's is. Right. He's oh, right. Oh, no. Oh, no. I couldn't have been there. <laughs> and I say, there's the motherfucker right there. So there he is. The and I said to him, how do you sit there, open up bottles of juice, drink out of them, and put them back? And he goes, so what? So are you I, serious? So I asked him. Oh so my god! What? I said, so what if I take my hand, shove it up your ass, and start walking and working your mouth like a puppet? So now I got all these people around me. <laughs> because and you know what's happening, right? You're you know what's happening to you. You're getting the. The, oh, he's the angry black man, white man vibe. That, that guy is so angry. <laughs> I thought of you because I thought of, I'm the angry black man right now. Because yeah, you know, oh, yeah. I have four supermarket employees around me. Now, I don't have to do anything. I got a wall and I got a butthead in front of me. So I'm yelling at him in the middle of the supermarket. I'll find you in the motherfucking parking lot. <laughs> so I, was like, I said, you just wait till I'm done. I said, I'm going to find you in the parking lot. And of course, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Isn't that weird how that happens in today's life where 20, 30 years ago, the whole store would have turned on and be like, let's get that guy, man. He's drinking juice in the store. Now it's like, sir, we need you to calm down. You're disturbing the dogs. They're therapy dogs. You're upsetting them, and they're getting their customers upset. Please calm down. No, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to put you on, dog, because you're driving. You're driving. Yeah, please don't stream it. Please don't stream and drive, guys. Look, it don't count. Listen, listen, listen. It don't count. It don't count. It don't count this time now. How does it not count? Because, because it's Sunday fun day. Because it's Sunday fun day. Stuff's just going by in the window. <laughs> 
I didn't do it, Dad. Well, well, first of all, I'm late. I'm late. I was stuck. I was stuck at a store. He's late. Ninety minutes longer than I should have been, so and I'm I'm living. I literally, I'm, I'm li like. I literally. No, there was no. Wait a minute. I literally thought you were going to. I wasn't to look at while I was doing my extra work either. So that no. I thought I thought you were going to tell me it didn't matter because because Don's also a valet. I thought he was going to tell me it didn't matter because it's not my car. <laughs> what's going on, guys? I'm professional. What, it's okay. What's going on, brother? Not, so we're hey, all professionals. No way. Hey, we we are like like. Oh, I didn't. Let me tell you the beauty. Let me tell you the beauty of of um of my area going on right now. You're gonna you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. Um, it's been very. This throws me off. It's been. Now in in cowgirl territory and it's throwing me off. I, I'm not hearing a lot of any of anything at all, and this is weird because usually this is the time of the year they're like, "Woo, draft time, baby! We're gonna get the whatever player. He's the next cowboy great. We're gonna go to the Super Bowl." And it's silent. It's it's weird. It's throwing me off. Cowboys like their entire off season have been outside of some some of their own signings. Have been extremely quiet. I mean, they are probably seriously right now the most quiet team within the division. And uh, I mean, Washington to me, Washington has probably been the most active. I think Philadelphia has been the most in reference to being active, but actually adding exterior talent and helping rebuild their team. And there, then there's Dallas, and then there's just whatever the hell we're doing. Well, the only, the, only, the only big news on, on Dallas, the only big thing about Dallas was the Dak Prescott contract. Uh, other than that, it's been dead silent, like weird. But then you have us, <laughs> where <laughs> the fans are just trying to figure out what are they going to have for breakfast the next day because they don't know who they want their quarterback to be. Half of us want a new quarterback, the other half want DJ, the, the, the other quarter, the other quarter, Wants Eli Manning back. The, uh, another quarter just says anybody. Uh, Bo Nick. Then we got what, what was it? We got a five foot nothing running back that can run a four or whatever. But I've never heard of him in my life. But maybe he has a Twitter highlight. I don't know what's happening. Don't worry, he played at Columbia. The powerhouse. Oh, powerhouse. oh, yeah. oh, oh so smart. <laughs> He's smart. Oh my god. Okay. Columbia once went zero and fifty three. Lost like 53 straight games. Yes. And then he transferred to, I believe, South Carolina. It wasn't only had like 36 yards. You know why he went to South Carolina? He had to get the team GPA up. We know, we know how it is. You gotta get that smart guy on the team, get the GPA up for the whole team. We not, we they're not trying to trick us like that. We already got a smart guy on the team. Who do, wait, wait, and wait, DJ. wait, wait. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Is there a, uh, is there a different? Oh God! That, that I'm not familiar. With? Is there a different guy named DJ? <laughs> I mean, we must be talking about another. one of the the the, uh, the weight training staff named DJ. That guy's a genius. <laughs> you mean the guy who fired and brought back? <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, why, at this point, at this point, why not? Because I'm I'm flabbergasted. Like like you said earlier. The brass might not be smart enough to to draft a quarterback, and and then again, our plans, and then again, our plans got messed up anyway by um picking up by a clone pass rusher and giving them all this money, so we can't even have two first round picks because we all talked about drafting a wide receiver and coming back in the first round and hopefully getting Penix. But then when we seen his um uh, his pro day, we're like, oh crap, we're gonna have to draft even higher now because Oakland is like, mm. A quarterback. So we're, we're just stuck in limbo right now. I mean, not Oakland, Las Vegas. I was like, Vegas is saying the same thing right now. It's the Don. It's the heat. <laughs> well, Vegas actually I mean, has a number one receiver in Adams, so they all re they just need a quarterback. Does actually one, they have a one and two? They got Renfro over there too. Renfro as well. Oh yeah, Renfro. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I forgot about him. Does do, do either of you guys believe the fact that um, Darren Waller is waiting 
to the draft to see what the Giants do in reference to the quarterback to decide whether he wants to come back or not. Because I just asked this question because if we draft a quarterback, he's really saying that he would rather play with a rookie quarterback than Daniel Jones. <laughs> I mean, is that really well, well, I, I, I don't know. My, here's my question. Well, in his contract, does it state he doesn't get paid if he gets hurt? Because if that's the case, he might as well just come back, fake an injury, and just and just not play the rest of the year. Well, that'd be because Waller. Waller's, Waller's got the six point nine million dollar cap. We can get that six point nine million dollar cap number down. Uh, but he's he's come out and basically said, or people in his camp has said that he is waiting to see what the Giants do in the draft. You know what that means? You know, and you're married. I don't know if you're married, brother, but I know Tim is. You know what that means? That means I'm waiting for what my wife wants me to do. That's that's AKA talk. That's what that really means. I'm waiting for my wife, who's the better athlete, to tell me what I should do with my career. And she's a champion. And she's a cha I was about to say, and she's a and champion. She's and she's, and she's a champion. champion. I just got to say one thing about the WNBA. I saw something that pissed me off, and this is just going to be a quick thing, guys. The WNBA is complaining again that they are not getting paid like the NBA, that they're not getting the percent of the NBA salary, or that they're not making that NBA money. But the problem is WNBA brings in $300 million. The NBA brings in like $2.6 billion. And the percentage of salary that the WNBA gets to their revenue is actually – like 15% higher than what NBA players get. And they are, yep. making, they are making literally eight times the amount of revenue. <laughs> so technically, if you want to talk about equality, the NBA players are getting paid well less than they should in reference to percentage of what the WF player and NBA players make in regards to revenue brought in and generated. Just I saw that today and it's kind of do you, you know you know what the real i'll just add a quick footnote on that you know what the real problem is with the wnba and and barbara if you're out there tell this to your friends and i tell this to to to, to uh rachel all the time women don't watch it women don't watch it women rather watch steph curry lebron anthony edwards joe kick oh he's cute oh he's cute they don't watch their own sports they don't nope I, I watch nope. way more women's softball because I love baseball. Women's softball, uh, college lacrosse, college uh, women's college uh, basketball. The, the games that we just had were amazing. Yeah. The, the LSU watching Caitlin Clark with Angela Reese. That's a, that's a bad girl, Caitlin. She's bad. You better leave that girl alone. You know, even though I know she, you know, but she's a bad girl, man. She can put up the, put up the rock. But women don't watch the WNBA. They don't. That's the major problem with it. If women supported it more, then, then maybe they would get their guys to watch it more. Then they would. Then they would have that. I, 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 I agree. You have, I agree. you have to agree. When the NBA players watch it more than a casual fan, come on now. There's some. There's some That's a problem. I don't. I don't watch any. I didn't watch any women's conference. <laughs> just no, I do. I, I didn't like, either. I, I just like bet. It. I just bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you. Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> I did. I got I would have win it all. All right. Well, there you go. Hey, Big Don, I'm going to let you go because I'm getting a lot of feedback from your car. Uh, but I all right. Catch you all later. Next peace, time peace. Call, next time you call it, make sure you're stationary. Okay, I will. <laughs> Thanks, Big Don. I feel like I'm everyone's father. Stop driving and talking on the phone. What the hell's Was wrong? He, he's like driving the car, streaming, the sunroof's open. It's like, what are you, it's, like it's like birds going by. It's like, how are you doing? <laughs> And I love it because he's like, what are my kids? Like, I'm not doing that, Dad. It's like, I can watch the road going by. Yeah. It's like, hold on. Watch out for this Uber Eats guy. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Oh. <laughs> Yo, I got a real question. I got a real question real quick. I mean, I had a question. This is a serious question for you and everybody in the chat. Because I've been thinking about this for an entire month. I've just been waiting to say it. Oh, God. <laughs> And this is how I know most content creators are just follow each other. Like I said about the Lemmings comment on your stream on Friday. Why is it on a team that has so many holes as we do, if we're not going to take a quarterback, which would be dumb, which would be dumb, but if we're not going to take a quarterback, why in the Hades is the only other position we're talking about drafting at six is a wide receiver. There's no other positional players we can get in this draft at six. 
no. for a better value than a wide receiver? Well, bef- I'm 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 gonna throw a some- wide receiver with no quarterback. I am going to throw some shade on the Giants here. I'm going to help the Giants out because there is a rationale with this, James. There is. Is a, there? Yes, there is a an official NFL reasoning for this, and I don't know if you're aware of this. And I'm I'm going to bring this up. The I'm NFL, clearly not. The NFL Players Association this year has dictated that anyone who was within the sixth round pick has to either take a quarterback or a wide receiver. This, is from, this is from the NFL Players Association. Duh. I didn't know that. The Giants are just locked in. Oh, we just oh okay. So we so we have to take a wide out with no quarterback, or we got to take a quarterback with subpar weapons. Okay, gotcha. No other position, guys. I'm just just think about that. Every content creator, if you every tweet, every nobody is talking about any position other than wide receiver. How is that possible? How is that possible? Like nobody has mentioned. Linebacker, defensive end, tackle, defensive tackle, cornerback, safety, you know, other positions we may need. We just talking about a wide out. I find that very interesting. That's Don't all worry. I'm saying. According to Mike Lee, we're like we're taking a tight end. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Another tight end. That would be the giant way to take a tight end at six. <laughs> That would that another time. So Evan Ingram, Bellinger, Waller. How many of those guys are going to go through? Well, we just picked up the kid from Denver. Oh yes, we picked up him. Oh yes, the block mm. kid, the kid that can block. What do you think of the Isaiah Simmons re-signing? Because evidently, I'm the only one once again that sees just blatant stupidity in this move. Well, he didn't have a lot of takers, like you said. Yeah, no. Obviously. Um, so I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying. I'm trying to be objective. You know, he didn't have a lot of takers, you know, one to none, (laughs) one to none. We were the one. 31 teams over a multitude of times in a three-week period of time. You know what it's like? It's like, it's like if you ever date somebody and she's like, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to get some, I'm going to show you. And you're like, okay. And then like six months down the line, she's still like by herself or he's still by himself. And you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, how's that? How's that going? You doing all right there? You sure? Okay. All all right. Hang in there. All these cap websites had him like at an average salary of like eighteen million. Jesus Christ! I remember seeing that going. That's just fucking crazy. As market eighteen, value, 18 million, eighteen million dollars, and he probably him? came back for a little over whatever he was making. Not even last year because he was eleventh overall pick off his on the fourth year of his five year deal where no one picked up the fifth year option, which is a big sign. I like this. I love sub like Isaiah Simmons, king of the almost good players. No, that's what we are. That's what we are. We're the king of the almost good players. We let all our good players go. I'm just trying to, like I said, I'm literally just trying to figure it out because, like I said, I keep looking at what he what he's done in his career, Isaiah Simmons. And I'm not picking on Isaiah Simmons. I'm kind of making a a, I would say maybe a speech about the Giants' philosophy, because you would think him coming back, he he would he would have had this type of season. And then I looked at the fact that he only participated in thirty three percent of the defensive snaps for three hundred seventy seven plays, and he only played in forty nine percent of special team snaps. And this is a guy that was here for seventeen games, started four. And he only played in 33% of the snaps. It kind of reminds me of Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff only had had his all of his tackles, but he only uh, sacks, but he only participated in 30 something percent of the plays. And they're already talking about Philadelphia about paying him, getting rid, rid of Hassan Reddick and using Huff as just a pass rusher and not keeping huh. him on the field for an extended period of time because they do not want him to be exposed. <laughs> You know, it's, <clears throat> we we're in an era where we can watch the when we, you guys watch the games, right? It's just like the thing with Kayvon where I'm always getting on him. But when you watch the games this year that he played in, how much of an impact did Simmons really have? And this is like, you know, I'm not I know, you know, Tim, so I'm not. You know, but when you watch the game, did you feel like his presence was felt on the field? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Charles Oakley was not the greatest scorer. He was not the most athletic guy. He couldn't jump out of, you know. 
but he made his presence felt on the court. I will, uh, Simmons, say, I will say this. I no, I will I'm gonna throw some shade on Simmons again. I will say this. The Washington okay. game. I think the Washington he, game, the one had, team we always beat. He had the fifty something yard interception touchdown for interception for touchdown. And I think he Off Sam like, Howell. Ooh. And Ooh. Right now he only played in 38% of the snaps. And I'm gonna say the Miami game, which we lost 31 16. He had I was gonna say the game we, we lost. He had nine total tackles and he played in oh. of the snaps. You want to know why he had nine tackles? Because guys were running all over the place. <laughs> he was just going, come here! Because come here! Were 31 <laughs> come here! Somebody get that guy! Come on, where are you? Please, please. The funny thing is, you started off that defense of him with the Washington game. Oh, the one team in the last five years we have a winning record against? That's not saying much, brother. Listen, listen, That's not listen, saying much. Daniel Jones fans still use the Tampa game in year one. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. That's trust me. I oh, I know. At least the Washington game was not that far away. It was not that long ago. I know, but it's, you tell me he got a pick six off of Sam Howell, who's about to get replaced, and he's he not got, even on the Redskins anymore. He got traded. <laughs> he's over so, <laughs> so we so the hopes of him getting another pick six off that guy is not going to happen because he's not there. <laughs> you, you have these teams that have moved on from their. You and I have talked about this. You have these teams that have moved on from their quarterbacks after two years, after three years. You you, you have after one year. You have after one. Josh year, Rosen. You you have a team like Pittsburgh who totally revamped their entire quarterback room to the tune of only four and a half million between two guys. And one of them is a former. Super Bowl ring holder. Oh, well, he's not a former slut. He did win the Super Bowl. The other guy is a former first round pick who is probably may come into his own under Tomlin. You see Washington just move on from Sam Howley, who he didn't have a terrible year. Sam Howley didn't, he didn't have a great year, but for a guy that was in his second year, if you compare it to the likes of Daniel Jones, he had, he had a stellar year. So you have these guys that are, that, that are moving on, even within your division. You got to remember Sam Howe. Threw for almost four thousand yards, twenty-one touchdowns. He did have twenty-one interceptions, but you know he still he was only in his second year, and he's this was his true starting experience. You see this, and then you watch what we do. <laughs> you watch how we hold on to Daniel Jones like he is this 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 I don't know what you would call it. He's not even a quarterback messiah. We hold on to him like he's our whoopee. He's our yeah. he's, he's our security blanket. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, security blanket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is this: we haven't washed that security blanket in five years. So, oh, it's stinky. Now, it stinks. It's stinky. And normally, when you have something that's stinky and dirty, if you can't wash it, what do you do with it? Throw it out. Throw what the fuck out? What the? Just, I mean. What is the mindset? I've already said this before. I do not think that Giants are going to take a quarterback in this first round. I don't think they're going to take him at six. I really don't. And I've already said this before. I will drop, and you're going to be running. You're going to be on the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the draft night, yes, sir. You're going to be on the draft because I'm going to be at the stadium with Big L and a couple other people. And I've already said this. If they take a quarterback at six, I will drop in the middle of the Giant locker room and do 100 push-ups. If they take a quarterback six, because I don't see it. And I just, I just don't understand this philosophy of we're rebuilding. We're not rebuilding. We are rebuilding. I gave Dan Jones a contract because we were kind of rebuilding. We're not, we're back in a rebuild, but we're going to get Brian Burns where we're going to give him all this money, but we may cut the quarterback at six. We might not take quarterback at six and we may roll with Daniel Jones in year seven. <laughs> just hearing you say that. It's so funny. But, but that's what I'm talking about. That. I have fans, people that live around me that are fans of other teams. This is the shit that they say to me, and I don't know what to say. Tell me what to say. Tell them we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and just be honest. It's okay to be honest, guys. You know, it's. I know we live in an era people fake it till they make it and come up with excuses and try to put all the, the good stuff in the front. Meanwhile, behind, it's just being held up by tape and, and uh, sticks. But we don't know what we're doing. And it's okay to say that. We, people who are like, I believe in Shane. Why? I believe in DJ. Why? Tell me why. 
And if you can't give me two or three good reasons, then you can say, you know what? Well, maybe I'm not sure. It's okay. We don't know what we're doing. We draft this. And, and yes, we keep going back to the, I'm not even bringing up Eli. We drafted a guy at six that we should not have drafted at six. That's number one. Should not have drafted him at six. Like Colin Coward said, he is, if Dave Gettleman the year before said, I believe in taking the best player available, Daniel Jones, quarterback or non quarterback, was not the sixth best player in that draft. Not period. Not, not even, that's not even a discussion anymore. Not even close. You kept that guy, and it's okay to make a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm not perfect. Tim's not perfect. None of you in the chat are perfect, and it's okay. We're humans. But when you make a mistake, you don't re up on the mistake. We re upped on our mistake that everybody in the world said, well, the Giants should just franchise tag him. We didn't do that. We gave him a contract based off one game, and it was a playoff game, but it was one game. And during that year, he threw 15 touchdowns. 15 in a year where we were winning games because a pigeon came down and the opposing quarterback threw the ball and it tipped off the pigeon's wing and it went into Simmons' hands and he ran back for a pick six. That's how we were winning games. Now, after re-upping on that guy, oh, and by the way, we re-upped on our mistake and we let our best player, because I don't care how you feel about Saquon. Again, Saquon was our best player and we let him go because we didn't treat him right. And all the other players in the locker room saw that. Now we're out of even Kayvon, and he's a ghost. <laughs> and he saw that. So now here we are, right? Here we are. Years later, we have again the sixth pick in the draft. We could have had more, but people were so happy that Tommy DeVito ran out there and he completed some passes. Yay! Now we have the sixth pick in the draft, right? And again, this is my philosophy. This is what happened. What? Sorry, brother. I just, I just love your white man imitation. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I got to be honest. Listen, I'm not racist or prejudiced. No, you're not. I love Tim. You know, but, but we have to call a spade a spade. The angry black man thing. That's a real thing. Well, in all fairness. But, but this Tommy DeVito fandom thing that was going on. I don't know where that comes from. That's even weirder than the Daniel Jones thing. Because at least Daniel Jones, I could say, why? Right, well, he won a playoff game. You guys want to hang on to that for five years? Five. You know? But the Tommy DeVito? I'm, I'm now marketing spaghetti sauce? <laughs> and guys are actually talking about, well, he's taking up a roster spot. So and to go to my... Charging like $125 an autograph. So to go... So anyway, there was the whole controversy of... He was supposed to go sign autographs and then he had to fire his agent because his agent was trying to, what are we talking about? Why is that even a story? Because we're the Giants. Holy crap. Because we're the Giants. <laughs> so let's sum it up. We have the number six pick in the draft, right? This, this is the most heavy quarterback draft in the last few years. I would say since Right? Right. Well, you may have a guy go in the third round and he may turn out to be good. Listen, we talk about Joe Milton and every, all these people. We don't know. Joe Milton may turn out to be better than Anthony Richardson. We have no idea. Right now, it doesn't seem like it, just based off what we're looking at, but we don't know. But the point is, there are a lot of prospects in this draft. Now, the really, really top ones, we're not going to get unless we trade up, which is probably not going to happen because those teams at the top, they need a quarterback just like us. They do. Right? So all I'm hearing from, you know, people in the news and other content creators and fans is we need to get a wide receiver. That's gonna that's that's gonna that's gonna change. That's gonna you take a guy in the top ten wide receiver with no quarterback. That's gonna change that that's gonna really improve this team. Is that is that what we really want to do? Is that gonna help? Is that gonna help us? Or is that gonna think about it? Is taking a wide receiver, a top wide out, is that really going to help this team going forward? Because if we don't take a quarterback at all, which would be nuts, and I'm not talking about first round, I'm talking about second, third round too. If we don't take a quarterback at all, I got news for you guys. Danny Nichols is coming back for another year. 
Because what are you going to do? You're going to roll out Drew Locke? By the way, Drew Locke, the guy who's in the same draft as Daniel Jones, now we have them both on our team? Yay! Man, yay! This is exciting. This is exciting. I love watching other content creators because I get so pumped. Man, we got Drew Locke here. He's going to come here. He's going to compete. Yeah, man. Everybody likes Drew Locke. You hear how Seattle talked about him? Yeah. But we're the team that told Russell Wilson, hey, we want you to come here, even though you are dirt cheap. You are dirt cheap. We could give you a beer and a croissant. That's how much we're paying you. But you're going to back up Daniel Jones, who's coming off major surgery. How do you feel about that? Oh, you want to go to Pittsburgh? Oh, okay. Well, well, give us a call back after you're done in Pittsburgh. I don't know. I don't know what guy. I don't, I'm, I've lost it. The Josh Allen rumor this past week. That that took it. I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. White Vic, my favorite player in the league, is never coming here. How about that? He's never coming here. You want to know why? Because I DM that guy and I go, "Don't come here." Even when you're cut, don't come here. Don't come here. I love you, man. Don't come here. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing, guys and gals, kings and queens. We don't know what we're doing, and we have no idea what the, what the Giants are going to do. We have no idea. Nope. Ah. We, got, ah. we, got, we, got, we got zero clue. And those that do not know, I, I've, I've now posted on the bottom. This is the James Williams Angry Black Man segment, as you can clearly ah. see. The- <laughs> ah. We should just call it this. This is the ABS. This is the ABS part of the show. <laughs> Oh my God! I love I love the angry black man segment because you know what? Because you have and you know I love your brother, and, and you know I love you with all my heart. But you you just have you just have moments like this. We, we, we go, we go, there we go. There's James Williams in the angry black man segment. But I'm being. But that's that's a real reaction. Like I that's know. not awesome. you know. Like I don't have a channel. I don't want a channel. I don't want to have to do what Tim does and come up here and try to talk sense to the nonsense. I don't want to have to be out here fighting other content creators that I know are stupid. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're stupid. Some of you, it's okay. Everybody can't be smart. We all were not in the smart class in school. Some of us were in that class down at the end of the hall with four teachers, (laughs) two of them standing outside the hall like this. (laughs) You want to know why? I'll tell you. Later, <laughs> we were all not in the smart class. It's okay. It's okay, guys. As, as everybody, as, uh, as, uh, as, as Mike Williams says, the new angry angry black man segment is now sponsored by Fireball. Oh no, that would be Hennessy, Michael Lee. No, no, no. The black angry black man segment is not sponsored by Fireball. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious! Goodness gracious me! Big Blue Forever says hit the like button for Timmy. I forgot about that. I had I got uh, let's get to a couple people. I see C Sanders and I see Chris is in here. A uh, few a uh, few master says we do have the Rangers. He he is, he is actually a hundred. Oh, shout have, out to the Rangers. We do have the Rangers. Which is which is always great. Uh, let's say we all know DJ is trash. We know that with this, the Giants with the slicks picked, of course, like the tight end. You know who we could have had in the 2019 draft besides cool. Josh on the linebacker? Just take it. Oh, game. Sweat Montez Sweat. No, that Someone wasn't that year, right? Someone even better. Oh, I'll give you a hint. He went before, right before Dexter Lawrence. He went 16th overall, and he went to the Carolina Panthers. Oh, wait! The guy that we just no, don't, don't, no, 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 don't do that! Don't do that! I yeah, swear yeah. to God, if you say, "Chad," <laughs> are you serious? I Brian, didn't even know. Are you serious? Brian Burns went 16th overall, right before we took Dexter Lawrence. So basically, we just did a Knicks move. A guy we could have gotten, we didn't take him. Now we have to like overpay him and give draft capital just to get him. And as much as he may be good, he is no JPP. No. Sorry. No. Sorry. And no. I love you, Eight Fingers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Chris. Wow. Agrees. Chris agrees. I don't know what he's agreeing on because I'm late on the chat. Uh, wow. Tim, I agree. You don't build a team around a wide receiver. I agree. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Glass of wine to you, girl. Just tweeted out. I, I tweeted out a mock draft starting off with a punter and a kicker. 
And I bet that went well. I went that went well, well over on Twitter. Uh, Jay, oh, James also says, just know this team, uh, team are screwed for the next two to three seasons. But DJ is really a nice guy. Barbara also says, what if they trade up and take a quarterback? Do, uh, do you still do the push-ups? I'm 50 plus years old, Barbara. And I'm going to tell you this. If they trade up to do, get a quarterback, I will do 200 push-ups. In the middle of the I tell you what, I'll, I'll do a hundred push-ups on the stream too. If they, if we actually trade up and do that, Barbara, I'll do a hundred push-ups on the stream. And I will do it in the, and I will do this in the middle of the New York Giants locker room, and I will have Big L Gigant Day count it out. That's and you know what we're gonna look like? <laughs> we're gonna look like those guys. Let's run laps. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how confident I am. <laughs> let's, quarterback. let's run laps and show the team how much we support them. We, we, we support the team. So we're going to run laps and then say we just did it, we just did it for Oh, fun. my God. What is going on out here, man? Made by the Giants said, I hate Joe Shane as much as I hate DJ. Swear he is trash. Mike Lee says, we mm. don't know what we are doing because don't even know what the problem is. Mm. That's like mm. says, good morning, gentlemen. I think at this point in time, the Giants need to just ask their team how to rebuild because we've been rebuilding the past seven, eight years, and at least two of them, two more bad seasons coming. I agree. I kept telling people. Yeah. I came yeah. over in the chat saying I can't give you 160 million reasons why we'll continue to suck for at least the next two years. Made by Giants. Yeah. A good time. Eli threw for 2,100, uh, 21 touchdowns, 4,300. That last start. He, well, it wasn't his... Yes, it wasn't his last starting season. It was his last good starting season when we made the playoffs. So let's. let's oh, play. we lost the movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we lost, lost, um, lost yeah. the. Yeah. I love it. James has that Dr. Evil. <laughs> Dr. Villain has a Dr. Evil villain laugh. <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly, OG says, I don't want to draft a black quarterback because we have a short leash. If he had a bad year, the Giants fans would love him like they do DJ. If DJ were black, he'd be gone. If DJ were black, he could run straight without falling down. How about that? <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> God, I'm having fun trashing this guy, man. You know, I can't. You know, it's funny. I was, I was literally going to say that, but I said, I, with James. I had a feeling you were going that way. And I was like, no, I'm going to let James go with that. Yo, man, guys, man, I'm sorry to keep. Do y'all remember that moment? I remember where I was when this guy's running and he has a convoy of giants with him. And they're like, come on, come on. And they're in the end zone. And this dude falls down at like the 10. And they turn around like, Did this mother scrubber just fall down. <laughs> Holy crap in a handbag. Holy crap. Woo! But you know what it is? Well, why is that a hater thing to say? Why? Is, he sucks. If He's I, not good, guys. I, I, C. Sanders says, I also don't understand the logic of draft a wide receiver. Maybe people don't see what we have in Hyatt, one of the fastest wide receivers, and no one can get him the ball, so let's do it again. I agree <laughs> with the fact there was plenty of times Hyatt was open that DJ did not throw him the ball, but there were times that Tyrod Taylor threw Hyatt the ball and he dropped him. True. So that happened too. There were multitudes of times where Hyatt got knocked off his route because he couldn't get around the DB, which did, which basically precluded him from being in the play. So while there are good things about Hyatt, there are also and a lot of some of that issues of Hyatt's play can be placed squarely on the uh, on the quarterback and there were plays that you saw were designed deep shots for Hyatt that Daniel Jones <laughs> didn't see and just checked down <laughs> yeah I just had a funny moment if we if you invite me like you usually do which I love you but we go to a game right we're going to be at the game <clears throat> you know what's going to happen we're going to be at the game you guys will be watching at home you know what we're going to see He's going to go 47, uh, 47 red, 47, set up. Hyatt and neighbors are going to be streaking down the field like this. Yo, yo, I'm up. Yo, both of them, right? He's going to do the, uh, uh, uh. and then Wandell's going to come across the middle like, hey, hey, hey. He's like, oh, too many decisions, too many decisions. Oh, I'm just going to run it for two yards. We're going to see why, if we draft a wide receiver with no quarter, you're going to see guys streaking all over the field. No balls being thrown. That's what you want to see? That's what, that's what we're going to see. No balls being thrown. 
<laughs> I love the I love Danny. Angry black man equals truth. <laughs> Sometimes, most of the time, not all the time. James, it's it's always truth when the James says, "Okay, Mike says Colt 45 forty five. You're gonna be sponsored by." No, I'm I'll sorry. do that, Mike. I'll but, do that, Mike. I, I love you, brother. I really do. I really do. All my heart. But you're not Billy. You're not Billy D. Of course I'm not. But my last name is Williams. It is Williams. But you're not. Oh damn, you're right. Oh, ha! Shit. oh shit. Ha! He got me. On, he got me on that one. Okay, so you can do Colt forty five. Blazer says I am smart enough to know not to trust the Giants general manager. C Sanders says I thought it was sponsored by Jaime Kin. <laughs> uh, Barbara just loves it. Uh, Jared says, if they trade up for a quarterback, I get that. Joe Rev is right. If they trade up for quarterback, I am sending him one of my, um, uh, Yo, he's been waiting. He's, he's been, yeah, he's been jo- big Joe. Idea. Shout out to you. He, you've been wanting that hat yeah. for a while. I do have two of those salute to services hats. And if you go, try to buy one on eBay, they're like $300. Oof. Not that I was trying to sell one on eBay. Uh, Craig says, honestly, what quarterback would survive behind the O-line Mahomes, Josh Allen? Yeah. Yeah. To name two, yes. 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 <laughs> we should start naming quarterbacks. Oh that God. We should start naming quarterbacks, Craig, that played or have played behind bad offensive lines and succeeded. And I'm going to throw out the first one. Eli Manning, 2011, had one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Almost got himself killed in that game in San Diego. Excuse me, excuse me in San Francisco during that playoffs and won a Super Bowl. You know, it's crazy. As much as we talk about, again, we get some facts over narrative here. As bad as the offensive line, and people have keep talking about it you know, for DJ, I have never seen DJ look as beaten up as I saw Eli in that San Fran game. Never. That dude, he looked brown. He had so much dirt on him. Jersey, whip, blood, helmet, this way, and he's getting up going, did he catch it? Did he catch it? We scored? Two plays before he threw that touchdown, he got up and his helmet was literally this way. And he had the grass, he had everything. I and I said to people, I've said to people, and I've said to people all the time, I've watched Giants for a long time. And that was the first time I was ever truly worried for the health of a quarterback because he was getting killed. And he was getting killed almost on every single drop back. And he just kept getting back up. I always remember. The scene from Rocky Two, when Duke comes up to Carl Weathers, you know, Paul, and, and <laughs> Paul, 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 Paul Creed's like, "What are you afraid of?" And you know, and Duke says, "Honestly, he goes, I watched that man. I watch you beat that man like I've never seen no man ever get beat before." And he kept coming after you. That was yeah. in that game. And th- I think I think San Francisco was literally afraid. That he was going to do something, which he did, and he helped win. He helped the Giants win. Oh, win. wait a minute, Tim. Are you saying that despite being under constant pressure and being beaten down to a bloody pulp, Eli Manning still stood tall and threw touchdown passes and led us to victory? Hmm. So when DJ is under pressure and he gets beaten down to a Duke bloody pulp, and he doesn't do that. Is that more on the offensive line, or is that talking to DJ's fortitude as a quarterback? People forget 2004 Eagles game. James Trotter almost decapitated Manning. <laughs> Literally, almost decapitated him. It's <laughs> most silly, man. Players would have never come back from that hit because Eli didn't even see him. And I remember that because he came in late in the game, and I was like, oh, my God, he's going to get killed. People talk about the Carr brothers, about how they, they took a beating, and you know that's why they, they were gun-shy and this and that. But Eli took the same beating in 2004, worse at times. And he took the same beating throughout his career at certain points in time when he was asked by Kevin Kilbright to go back and be the gunslinger. But we don't, no, we, don't, we don't want to talk about that. And no offense to any of the wide receivers we've had because I love them all. But Andre Johnson was better than every wide receiver Eli Manning's had, except okay. for maybe Pla- Plaxico maybe on up there. But everybody else, Akeem Nix, Manningham, Cruz, as much as we love him, Shepard, all these guys, Andre Johnson was a beast. So that guy had an official number one and was still getting the smoke beat out of him. Yep. So having a number one wide receiver, you know, it's not guaranteed you're not going to take some hits. No. 
but Strider, it's okay. It's okay. We're all right. Strider says the best needs to work <laughs> open while getting pressed. Needs to get needs to be better. That's what Hyatt needs to be. Hundred percent. He needs to work on getting open and get stopped getting knocked off his routes. Yeah, that, that's one of his biggest issues. Chris comes out and says, 40 targets, 23 receptions. I have a video of DJ's first three years on my channel. Lol, he's so damn bad. Made by <laughs> first, first of all, made by Giants. Uh, you're supposed to promote your channel on my channel. <laughs> made by Giants. I have to look up your channel now because I don't know who you I don't know who you are. Um and I can't find your channel. Uh, made by Giants. Just put your put your channel link in the chat. That's fine. Go ahead. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I feel bad. Yes. Un un unlike most content creators, Tim actually likes to support people and promote things. Wow, guys. Well, I felt bad. Well, you know, I would make myself look bad now because Rob told me the other day during the stream that he was making videos again. You know, I know. I know. I was. I know you. <laughs> really? You are. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, you're on YouTube? <laughs> I was messed up. Big shout out to Rob, man. That was messed up. But it was honest because I didn't know. You're, you're on YouTube? I didn't know he was. I didn't know he had a Giants channel. You got videos? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you talk about in your videos, man? <laughs> my dumbass, I pull up his, his channel. And the first thing I, my dumbass said, because I usually just say the first thing that comes to my mind. And my wife always says, you don't have to say the first thing that comes into your head. I said to him, I pulled uh -huh. up the video and go, hey, this video doesn't have any views. <laughs> so, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy right here. You ain't got no views, man. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> it's just, just what I saw. Like you didn't, it's like, you didn't even watch this yourself for one of you? <laughs> no, I didn't even think about that. Oh Listen, I only have one video out. If you think I didn't watch that thing three times just to give me some self promotion, you're buggy. It's like a rapper putting or a musician putting out a CD. You think I, I'm not going to buy my CD at least once? Or have somebody, give me a break. Stop at it, least stop my mom it. buy it. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Oh my goodness gracious. I got to go out in a little bit here. Stop it, guys. Matthew says, Daniel Jones, king of the almost underthrow pressures. Moet also says, okay, she is getting ready now. Who else uh, could we have? Josh Allen, Jaguars. I know we could have Josh Allen. We talk about that all the time. I don't want to talk about it. I still have my Josh Allen Giants jersey. Uh, nope, he's going to dump it to Singletary and underthrow him. <laughs> That'd be dead. Jones. Mike Lee says, Herbert, uh, Burroughs and Herbert, as well as we're naming quarterbacks. Stanley says, hey, Tim, I don't understand why the Giant fans think the Giants are heading in the right direction when we just let our best talented players go to our rivals for a mediocre quarterback that gets hurt. I mean, Bar Barbara, Barbara brought up Julian Love. Like, how many guys have we let go in the last five years Like that went on to other teams and actually played good? We also have uh, Made by Giants, who is a Made by Giants, who is a content creator. <laughs> I can't find your channel, man. Where's Zach? Made by Giants. Made by Giants. Can't you just type in things? Made is it called Made by Bi Giants, James? Made by Giants? Is that what this channel? Is that what this thing is? I think. Oh, I would hope so. If he's, you know, oh, unless no. he has a different name, unless he's using a different name. Made by Giants, right here. It says it right here. How come I can't find the channel? Made by Giants football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I survived ten seasons with the Giants. Well, that ain't saying much. Uh, I survived. Ten me. seasons? I'm you better put in some work, buddy. Ten. Ten. Nothing. Uh, made, by Gi made by Giants. I cannot find your channel. And I'm not the most astute one in regards to finding things on social media. But I can't <laughs> No, you're not. <laughs> as good as you are, <laughs> Indiana Jones did not bless you with that skill. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I'd be looking for the Lost Ark and find a tricycle. Oh, geez, says Eli Manning was a true soldier. He was. If you flip right past the channel, you want to watch your D D D Daniel Jones in it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that. <laughs> so, so I missed you, man. 
was who I was playing when you could still hit the quarterback. True, but Eli still had plenty of good legitimate number one wide receivers. No, we had good number one wide receivers. No, he we did. I didn't I, again. I didn't say that, guys. I said Andre Johnson was better. Andre Johnson. I know what I said. Is Andre Johnson better than Akeem Nix? Yes. Is Andre Johnson better than Victor Cruz? Yes. Is Andre Johnson better than Mario Manningham? Yes. Is Andre Johnson better than Steve Smith? Oh, yes. Steve R. Smith, Smith, not Carolina. I know. I had to. Yes. You had to to think about that for a minute. Uh, Was Andre Johnson better? And he didn't play in the Super Bowl. Was he better than Jeremy Shockey? Yes. Okay, guys. And I love Jeremy Shockey. You seen you seeing a pattern yet? <laughs> it's like I, I know what I said, guys, and I know you know, and I'm not getting on you, no. Know, but I know, but Eli did have, but he was not better than Andre Johnson. Derek Carr had Andre Johnson for years and still took the most hits of any quarterback in since since the integration of the league. Made by Giant says I only have two videos. Lol, I am not a YouTuber. He also says my Brandon Jacobs video does have like forty thousand views though. Get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. You're putting time out for bragging. <laughs> <laughs> You've been walking your bragging. Oh, God. He said, I already got two videos, but one of them is busting out there, man. <laughs> for those that, for those that do not know, if you follow Made by Giants, unsubscribe right now. Uh, and I'm just joking. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, James says you are correct. Plus, Eli only had those guys for a few years. He only had Cruz for two years. He only had Steve Smith for one. And he only had really Hakeem Nix in his prime for like one and a half seasons. And Plaxico would have been here longer, but you know, he wants to go to the club and sweatpants. Okay. We've talked about this PSA before. Uh, I'm just saying. Just saying. You are going to a strip club. And in the city of New York, where it's hard to get a concealed weapons permit, and you are going to take your illegal firearm and carry it into a strip club, you do not wear sweatpants. Do you know how dumb that is? What are you doing? The girl's going to come over. You're going to go, hold on, babe. They got to take this out. My gun. No, don't pull that out here. No, no, not that gun. My other gun. Matthew's got to run now. Always appreciate you, Tim. Catch you later. Peace out, Matty Ice. Matty Ice is there. Oh, God, Strider said, oh, God, yes, 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 yes. Oh, no. Thank you. Like, like I don't think you guys remember. Listen, we have this thing called YouTube that Tim is on now, and yeah. you can type in Andre Johnson highlights, and you could go look at it. Andre Johnson Hall of Famer? Yes. First ballot Hall of Famer or... Is he in the I game? I don't know. All right, first I would mm, I don't know the numbers, but put it this way: if he doesn't get on the first one, he's getting it on the second one. Do you want to hear some numbers real quick for him? Since he's not yeah, please. Him. Total career: one thousand sixty-two catches, fourteen thousand one hundred eighty-five yards, and seventy touchdowns with a three point four <laughs> for reception. If if Daniel Jones had that guy, he would just be doing this all day. Madden. I'm open. He is in the Hall of Fame. He is in the Hall of Fame. Two he years. is. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. A Hall of Famer wide receiver, but he's not better than the guys Eli had. Stop it. He had uh, seven pro bowlers with two all pro seasons. He is in the Hall of Fame. I did have to. I did with have to. Derek Carr. I mean, with um, not Derek Carr. The other Carr. David Carr. David, sorry. Yes, the wrong D. With David Carr, he's in the Hall of Fame. He also had Matt Schaub. Oh, stumped the Schaub? Yeah, he was good for about 1.5 seasons. Matt, Matt Schaub actually came out in that 2004 draft. People forget that. The 2000, the big 2004 quarterback draft. He did come out. Oh, he was the he was the forgotten guy. He was the uh, Matt Schaub was the second rounder. Um, I, you know, I, I can't fault him. He actually, I mean, Matt Schaub had it. You know, for a guy for I would say his limited skill set, he did throw for over 25,000 yards, 136 touchdowns. He has so, a better arm than DJ. And he did have a 12 and 4 season. He did have two winning seasons in a row with an expansion team at 7 and 3 other than 12 and 4. And but you know, he's a great quarterback, but he also threw for 4,700 yards, one season, 29 touchdowns. So I mean, he's, he's better statistically than, than the guy we got. Come on, man. Yo, do you realize right now fans are actually excited that we're gonna have a quarterback competition in camp? 
with two quarterbacks that were in the same draft, and we took one of them at six, but the other guy who was taking that, he was on his third team, and people are talking about, well, he's going to compete for the job. Really? Really? Like, that's bad, guys. I don't know where Tim went. My face just got really bigger. I'm sorry, guys. But, like, guys, I, yeah, we, we got to stop. We got, lo- we got lost there for a second. We, we got bumped off there for a second. <laughs> you got to uh, stop this. For the person that's saying Andre Johnson, home but Cruz had a better season. One season? I don't. I don't want to. I, I love your brother, but not you. I'm, I love Craig, uh, but I want to. I want to just. I want to just point out a seat. I want to point out four seasons for Andre Johnson: 103 catches, catches, 1,147 yards, five touchdowns, 115 catches, 1,575 yards, eight touchdowns, 101 catches, 1,569 yards, nine touchdowns, 112 catches, 1,500 <sighs> yards, and four touchdowns, 109 catches for a 1,407 yards and five touchdowns. He had in four years Victor Cruz's entire career. This is this is why I said the Dennis Hopper thing because the Giants fan and again Craig, I'm not, we are so upset and just beaten down that we're we are cannibalizing each other. This guy, you're actually arguing me Victor Cruz over Andre Stud Johnson. You ready for this? Victor Cruz's biggest season, 82 receptions, 1,500 yards, nine touchdowns. His next big season, 86 receptions, 1,092 yards, 10 touchdowns, and then he did not have another 1,000 yards for the remainder of his career. Which way are you guys watching the game? Maybe I got to watch it like this. I got to watch it like this. Maybe I can see what you got. Maybe if I do it like this, I got to watch. I got to like do this. And then now I'm like, oh, DJ looks good now. Oh, look at him. He looks good now. Oh, he's running straight. Oh, he fell down, but he's still running straight because I'm looking like this. What are you guys doing? Oh, my goodness gracious. I, I, and, Craig, I'm not making fun of you, man, but Victor Cruz is nowhere even near. No, we're not We're not attacking you, but we, as men, we could say, hey, brother, that's cool, but Andre Johnson was way better than Victor Cruz, brother. Yeah, and longevity. Hall of Fame is not about longevity, but he was better than him. He had, and technically, if you look at it, Victor Cruz's total yardage was 4,549 yards in three seasons. In three of Andre's three seasons, he eclipsed all of Victor Cruz's statistics. And, Vi- and Victor Cruz played with Eli Manning, who's way better than Schaub and Carr, and Johnson still put up those numbers. Ha ha! Ha ha! Go figure! Oh, I agree. I Odell, was, Odell was the number one wide receiver. Odell was... But, oh, but if you asked me if I wanted Odell in his prime, or I wanted the more consistent, more, I would say, more reliable... Oh, Andre the guy who's who's not going to piss on the field and trash his quarterback in the ESPN next, next to Little Wayne. Yeah, I'm taking the other guy. I would have to. I would have to take. Now, is was Odell more explosive than Andre Johnson? Yes, 100. percent Sure, but sure. Was, was Andre Johnson more consistent in reference to being in the game and being was a change reliable and more Ooh. reliable and playing Ooh. on an expansion team? Oh. I gotta, I gotta go with the guy that's. I gotta go with the guy that's more reliable, and is going to be actually. Andre, <laughs> Andre Johnson is the greatest Texan in Texan history. I love this. James has the same voice as Michael Strand. Just closes, just close your eyes, and you don't know who is speaking. I mean, I love, I love Big Mike. He was one of my favorite players, but I, you know, oh, thank you. Hey, shut up! Close my eyes. <laughs> Shut up, <closer. laughs> okay, go ahead. It's like, well, in all fairness, guys, you know, <laughs> oh, this guy, damn it, you had to pop this guy up. God damn it, Carl. Thought we were going to get out of here without seeing you today. Damn it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Craig, I also think that I, I also bet you think Victor Cruz is better than Larry Fitzgerald, who put up a thousand yards receiving every year and played so many different quarterbacks in Arizona. You are freaking nuts, Craig. Well, let's not pick on Craig. Let's not pick on. Yeah, Craig. we're not doing that. But but we're not we don't want to pick on each other because everybody here is an intelligent fan. But we also have gotten away from this thing in life and in sports, which is weird because sports is supposed to be very. Uh, cut and dry meat and potatoes where you just can't call it what it is. They're like, 
like, yes, there's your opinion, my opinion, and then the truth with most things. But when it comes to sports, no, no, no. That's like saying, is, Steph Curry, is he the greatest shooter in NBA history? Mm, probably. You could probably say that, you know. Mm, you know, or top three. But you can make the argument that he's up there, you know. And people would, okay, cool, you know. Eli Manning, is he a Hall of Famer? Yes. Will he be first ballot? Probably not. But is he going to get in? Yes. You know, it's just like, like, okay, great, great, great uh, point. A lot of people are coming out here saying, well, Patrick Mahomes is already better than Tom Brady. Already? Damn, already. You know, some people are saying that. I'm not saying that. Tom Brady is the greatest thing I've ever seen at quarterback. That guy, everything he did, he had an undefeated season until he met us. And he still had an undefeated regular season. He came back from 28, 25 down in the Super Bowl. It's like we can debate stuff, but certain things have to be cut and dry. It's like it can't be all this. Like you can feel how you feel. Like, listen, I love Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen is one of the best quarterbacks White Vic in the league. I, I would argue that with anybody. Is he better than Mahomes? No. Is he better than Joe Burrow? I don't know. Is he more athletic than Joe Burrow? Yes. So you can have your opinion with still being able to say, okay, yeah, but that guy's better. It's okay. It's okay. We got to stop doing this though, where just because I have an opinion and you disagree with me, but my opinion is still valid. It's valid to a point. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It's okay. It's okay. Andre Johnson is the best, is the greatest player in Houston Texans history right now. He is. So to even have a debate about the Giants wide receivers is insanity. So stop. Let it go. I'm going to go with, if I had to pick the greatest shooters in NBA history, I got four. So I okay, let me hear it. Let me hear it. On top of my head. And you have to remember, these guys played in different times than Steph Curry. Of course. You can't, Watch. some of these guys, you couldn't even breathe on them. You could, it's not like you couldn't, you can't breathe on Steph Curry without getting a flag, without getting a foul, a foul not a flag, a foul. You can't breathe on them. You literally can't. I'm going to have to, and I'm, I'm not going to put them in any order. No, 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 just shoot them up. Just pop them off. So you got to go Ray Allen. Okay. People forget, people forget his Sonic days. And I believe he's Jesus on. Shuttlesworth. Just putting that name out there. Yes, Jesus <laughs> shows worth. That's right. Good. He got game. <laughs> he got game, Spike Lee. Um, he's only, I believe, two percentage points below um, Steph Curry's field goal percentage. I think Steph Curry all time is like forty six point something. He's like forty five point something. So you got to go. You got to go Ray Allen. You have Copy. to. Go, you got to go old school and Larry Bird. Larry Legend. Larry that guy Legend. does not get enough respect. He doesn't get enough respect for what he did in the era that he played in because of the fact that you in the 80s and when it Larry played, you could literally go out there with a lead pipe and hit somebody and still not be called for a foul. And then you got to then you got to go with Pistol Pete. You got to go with Pete Maravich. Oh, who, who Pete Pistol, more, yeah. More of a shooting star than he was consistent, but as a pure shooter going back to his college days, Pistol Pete was and again, he played in this that 60s, 70s era where you, you never got the same, you don't get the same protection that a LeBron gets. That a uh, no three point line, no three point line. That's very good, but great point. But you don't get that same, you don't get that same protection that you get now, in reference to you know getting basically beat on day in and day out. But th those would be my top. Those and the, and all of those are valid. All of them, all of them. You know. But, but my thing is, like, so you would say those four guys, right? And then somebody would go, well, you're forgetting about Allen Houston. Huh? Huh? What are you talking about? Yeah, Allen Allen, the, Allen Houston got paid off a playoff series. Like, stop it. He got he got paid off of the ding, 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 bong. Yeah, he got paid Which off. Which we love him for. He got played off. He got paid off a playoff. So, all right, guys, I got to get out of here because I got to go shop. And Larry Bird talks shit and he backs it up. You can tell he was going to put up a three. Larry Bird, there, you have to, if you have not watched it, I don't remember what series it was. It was in the late 80s or mid 80s. The Celtics Lakers, that one championship. 
series. That was a war. I mean, that literally, you watch that game and watch it in its entirety, you will say, this is not basketball. This is rugby with them throwing the ball in the hoop. Because there, there was a shot where Kareem got so pissed, and Kareem never got upset. He got. Oh, yeah, he wanted to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to go. And he was looking for Larry and Parrish and McHale and Danny Ainge and, and, and Dennis Johnson and everyone else out there. He was he was looking for these guys. That's how this series this, – there was no basketball. Like, and I always tell people this. You want to watch real basketball, go watch the 80s. Go watch the Listen, 80s, man. Two, so two things. Knicks. <laughs> Two things, real simple. Get on Google and Google players talking about Larry Bird so you can hear it from his peers. It's very amazing. There's a bunch of videos out there about it, but watch that. And the second thing, the greatest thing I've heard about Larry Bird, and this is going to be mad racist, but I'm black. I can say this. He said, hey, get the white guy off me and get a brother on me. Because this is back in the 80s and 70s. Hey, why you got the white guy being me? Get him, get, get, get him off me, man. I'm going to cook him. And I love it because people forget back in the 80s that uh, the, 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 the uh, ratio of African-Americans to, uh, to Caucasians in the NBA was probably like 99.6% uh, to, to that 0.03% are 0.04%, and most of them played for the Celtics. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you had a starting lineup at one point. Of Larry, oh my God! Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Danny Ainge, Dennis Johnson, who some people think was white, and and, <laughs> and yep. then you had at one season Bill Walton coming off the bench. Oh yeah, that's right. They did have Bill one year. That was another championship wow. year. So yeah, the percentage of Caucasians in the league at that point in time, that point three percent, were all on the Celtics. <laughs> Throwing it up. And Larry said, get this point three out of here. <laughs> I need a 99% on me. Get this point three out of here. No, you know, Larry turned around and said, I don't need two brothers off the team. <laughs> you can't even make jokes like that anymore. You know, oh, God. I can't because I'm old and I'll just say I'm old. <laughs> Oh my God. I want to so thank funny. everyone for coming in. I got to go out shopping with the missus. Because I would like to go see her. Because it's a beautiful day out today. It's not raining. It is. I want to go out and spend some time with the family. So uh, I want to thank James for coming. Um, uh, Coach Dave, I saw you want to ask a question, but we are out of time today. Uh, so next stream, please make sure you come on. And I want to thank James for coming on as always. And once again, this is Tim Steer, James Trey Talk, Fire Man Olympic Blue LLC. I want to thank James William. I want to thank the Big Donner for coming on. I want to thank everyone on the chat. I want to thank everyone on Twitter. We will see. We'll have no stream tomorrow, but we will have a video, so make sure you stay tuned for that because it is the lunar, solar, whatever eclipse. So the world. Oh, yeah. So we have to make sure we're all safe. So everyone have a great rest of your weekend. James and I are out of here. Peace. Peace.